Hey everyone, I'm Sid. I'm a program manager on the Python AI and ML tools team here at Microsoft. And I'm really excited to be at DockerCon today because uh, I'm going to be talking about supercharging your machine learning development with Azure and VS Code. So let's get started. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the session overview. So um, I'm going to start with giving you a little bit of a description as to what the project is that I'm going to be working in. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about concepts. So um, in particular, I, I want to talk a little bit about Azure Machine Learning, what our workspaces, um, and then eventually lead to what our environments. Uh, so that's the bullet two that you see there. And then, uh, then we're going to look at how do we use the Azure ML environments concept in conjunction with dev containers in VS Code um, for uh, local training. So this is running and debugging my uh, running and debugging my training script all on my local machine, and then eventually we'll take the training that we do locally and we'll run it on remote compute uh, targets with again with Azure ML. And finally, I have a couple of getting I have a couple of getting started links. Um, as well as a little bit of a recap as to what we did from the beginning of the session towards the end. All right, so uh, let's jump over to VS Code where I'll talk a little bit about the project that we're gonna be working in today. So here, uh, as you can see, I have my VS Code window opened up. Um, today, we're gonna be looking at a uh, at uh, the uh, MNIST data set and what we're gonna aim to do is we're gonna aim to do a local execution uh, of uh, training a neural network um, to uh, to classify handwritten digits, which is part of the MNIST dataset, and uh, and then as I mentioned, we're gonna we're gonna validate that this works locally. Uh, we're 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 gonna use containers in order to achieve this local execution, and then uh, we're gonna and then and then once we've done enough validation, um, and if time permits, then we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to the remote target where we're gonna do a re remote execution of the same training. Um, and so, uh, so as you see here, I have um, I have my VS Code. I have a VS Code open. I have a, a, tr a, a training script, and I'm primarily going to be working on uh, a notebook that I'll open in just a second. All right, so let's jump over to the notebook. So, um, so, so to get started, I want to talk a little bit about Azure Machine Learning. So, Azure Machine Learning is uh, is a a service that provides you with a cloud-based environment to train, deploy, and manage your machine learning models. You can interact with the Azure Machine Learning service either through the Studio UI, which is like the Azure portal, if you're familiar with that, uh, the Python SDK, the, their CLI, or the VS Code extension, which I'll be able to show you later on in this presentation. Uh, now, one of the first concepts when it comes to Azure ML is the workspace concept. So the workspace is, you can think of it as a top level resource that you use to manage all of your uh, underlying assets and resources uh, during your training. So uh, here I have, uh, here what I, I have is a cell to just initialize my workspace. I'll uh, run this cell. Um, it'll take just a second. It's using configuration files that I have set up locally. Um, and yeah, and, 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 and it's done the initialization. So, so I have now, I'm now initialized to use this workspace for the rest of the presentation. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about in terms of concepts is Azure Machine Learning environments. So you can think of an environment as a way for you to define um, what your training script is going to run in, right? So you can specify Python packages, environment variables, and software settings. Um, and another thing to note is this is environments are not just used for training, but they're also used for inferencing as well. Um, you manage and version these environments within your machine learning workspace. So I'll show in just a second how I'm going to use that workspace object that I have from before with the environment object that I'll create. Uh, and then finally, um, these environments can be materialized in one of two ways. On your local machine, you can materialize these environments either as a conda end, right, that includes your Python specs. Uh, that includes your Python specs and packages, or as a Docker container, right? Which, um, or as a Docker container, which includes your software settings as well. And so, what we're going to do in uh, in this in this example is that we are going to use the we're going to materialize the environment as a Docker container because we're going to we intend to use that same container both locally and on our remote machines. So with that, let's take a look at uh, how we, we go about creating these environments. So now before, our, before uh, we take a look at creating environments, one thing that I want to do really quickly is I want to actually try and run my training script on my local machine. 
um, on my local machine to, to validate that, uh, to, to see, to actually see whether I can use this base Conda environment that I have here, right? So this is something that I've created outside of Azure ML. I'm just using Conda for this. Um, it does include a number of packages. Uh, it does include a number of packages that I've used for projects before. And so what I want to check now is whether or not just running it on my local machine is sufficient. Uh, or uh, whether there's an even greater advantage for me to use Azure Machine Learning and uh, and 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 Azure Machine Learning environments uh, as local Docker containers. So I'm going to start by just setting a couple of breakpoints. I'm going to set one at this NumPy step, at this TensorFlow step, and then um, and then I'm going to set it at uh, this uh, at at this prepare data step, right? And so I'll just navigate to the debug tab where I have a current file debug configuration. So I'll just hit start debugging. Um, and in just a second, this is going to try and run my training script that I have, um, as well as hit the breakpoint. Right? So that was fast. I hit the NumPy breakpoint. I expect to have NumPy, NumPy. That should be good. So now if I hit continue, okay, so the next thing is look, looking to see whether I have TensorFlow. Continue. All right, so an exception has occurred. So, so um, I, I don't have TensorFlow in this Conda environment, which means that I'm going to be unable to use this Conda environment that I have. Um, as part of, uh, uh, or in order for me to do this local, in order for me to do local training and execution. So, so with that, I'll go back to my notebook and uh, let's take a look at how we can use the Azure Machine Learning environments then uh, to to help satisfy that missing those missing dependencies, right? Um, so, I'm going to start by creating the environment and using a Conda specification file or a Conda environment or an environment YAML file um, in order to do so. So I'll quickly show you the environment YAML file. Here I have um, uh, he here I have a list of uh, dependencies that I want as part of my environment. So you'll see here that these are my core Conda dependencies, specific version of Python. Um, I mean, I, I want TensorFlow, right? That's the one that I was missing from my base environment. And then a set of pip dependencies for things like debugging as well as Azure ML um, metric logging. And so when I go back to my notebook, if you, if um, and and, you, and I take a look at the code, it's really simple for me to just say, I want to create an environment from a Conda specification file. I want to name it this environment. So this is this dockercon-tf-env, and, and I'm going to give it a Conda environment file um, to, to use. So uh, when I run this cell, it should just take a second, but yep, it was it's really quickly. What it's doing is it's creating an environment definition in AML. Um, uh, or sorry, AML is helping create an environment definition using that environment.yaml file. And so with that environment definition, I can validate things like what base image am I using? So it looks like it's using this uh, this Ubuntu base image um, that, uh, that Azure ML has. Uh, and then the next thing that I can look at is uh, are my conda and pip dependencies uh, correctly specified as part of my environment definition? So if I run this, um, you'll see that, okay, so I have so I have my conda packages, I have my pip pa pic packages, all of that looks good. And so both from a base, base image standpoint as well as Python package standpoint, things look great. So now uh, I want to take the next step and register this environment as part of my workspace. So now I'm coming back to that workspace concept that I talked about before, which is what's being used to, to manage all of, the, all of the underlying assets that I'm going to use as part of my training. Here I'm registering the environment so that I can then use it in multiple places, right? So if I have the environment registered, uh, in my workspace, I can then access that workspace from another machine, fetch that exact same environment. That in, I can use that environment as part of training. That environment is just going to that environment would get pulled, um, uh, or would would get pulled from the workspace and will then be used on on any remote compute target that I decide to train on. Right. So I'll just run this registration step um, to make sure that it's part of my workspace. Uh, it should take uh, it should just take a second. And yep. Yeah, and so okay. So that looks good. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can take this registered environment now that's part of my workspace and materialize it uh, on the on on the machine that I'm on right now. All right. So in order for me to materialize this environment on my local machine, I need to build I need to build the environment. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using ACR to do that. Um, I this is something that Azure ML kind of provides out of the box with their service. I don't have to. I don't have to make any um, additional configuration changes. Um, I don't have to build connectors to be able to use ACR. Um, uh, I can just use Azure ML directly. It use its uh, utilities to build 
uh, build and store container images in ACR. Uh, the advantage of doing so is that when I then move from things like my local training to my remote training, I can use uh, I can use the cached images that are that are built in ACR so long as there's no delta between uh, the environment that I intend to use and and what's there in the cache, right? And what I mean by a delta is sometimes you you find that you want to add new packages uh, after 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 local execution um, or after local training. Uh, with that environment, you find that there were missing packages that you had from before. You want to change the way in which you, you're training, so you want to add new packages. Um, and so you might need to make a change to the underlying environment definition. Um, and, and because then there's a delta between what's cached in ACR after the build that we're going to do and the new environment definition that you intend to use for, as part of your remote training, you may have to incur a rebuild, right? But assuming there's no delta, assuming the container images look uh, or environment definitions look the same, then I get a major perf advantage, right? Because I don't have to do that rebuild um, and I can just use that cached container image directly on my remote machine. So. So with that, uh, I'm gonna um, I'm 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 gonna show you how you would build the uh, or I'm gonna show you how you would build uh, it in ACR. So you see here that I'm just doing an environment.build and I'm passing in my workspace as context there, um, and then I would stream the image build details. I'm not gonna run the build because it does take a while, uh, but I'll just quickly uh, expand this to show you that. Uh, to show you what that looks like, right? So there's a there there are steps. It, I mean, the, the steps that you see here correspond to, um, to to what you maybe already be familiar with when you do uh, when you just do a regular um, uh, image build with Docker, right? And so I have the I have a pull step where it's just pulling that base image, um, and then eventually it's going to install Conda. It's going to install Conda dependencies as you see here, right? So that's a specific version of Python. Uh, there's a specific version of TensorFlow, right, which is what I specified in my environment YAML file, and then finally pip packages, which is just a little bit at the bottom, right. So then I'm going to run pip package. Uh, I'm going to install the pip packages that I specified again in my environment.yaml. So now if I scroll back up, I can just uh, collapse collapse this again, um, and 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 uh, and and now what I want to do is I just want to confirm that the image is available for me to use, right. So if I rerun this cell. You'll see that uh, it's getting image details, and then it's checking with those image details whether the image exists. So it does exist in ACR. That's awesome. That means that I can pull it from ACR onto my local machine, and so I'm going to get details of the image in ACR for me to then construct this Docker pull command. Right. So let me just run this step. So that was fast. Where I just so this is this is the environment name in the registry. This is the registry name. This is what I would use to do the pull uh, locally, which I'll just show you right here, right? So I can just copy that pull command. I can run this uh, cell directly in my uh, in, in the notebook. And so this is just gonna pull from ACR. Um, it, it should, again, yeah, it should use a cached image that I have on my local machine because I did this pull before as well. Uh, and then just for sanity, I'm gonna confirm that the image is available locally, right? So, um, so yeah, okay, it looks good. So the image is available locally. Um, all right, so so uh, so now that I have a now that I, now that I have the image available locally, I will now want to do my training with this image. So the way in which I'm hoping to do that is I'm going to use uh, I'm going to I'm going to use dev containers. I'm going to use the remote containers extension, uh, and 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 I and and then I'm going to use all of the other benefits that kind of VS Code has to offer from a debugging uh, standpoint as well. So uh, I'll show that to you in just a second. All right, so like I mentioned, um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show you, or I'm gonna try and use dev containers here with the remote containers extension. Um, so uh, what does that look like in terms of materializing the image as a dev container, right? So uh, I'm gonna use a dev container.json file, right? Um, and then I'm gonna use the remote uh, containers extension uh, to then work with that dev container locally. So the starting point is um, is 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 just creating a dev container.json. Uh, so I'll talk. I'll just briefly talk about it uh, in the dev container.json. Uh, I can specify the image that I want to run the container with. I can specify a workspace mount, right, or or just just volumes that I want to mount within that container. Because what it's doing here is that it's going to take that image and it's just going to do a Docker run um, with with some additional uh, with some additional args. And so one of those args being volume mounting. So here I want to take this directory that I'm currently working in, right. So this DockerCon MNIST. Um, and then I want to put it on the uh, I want to I want to put it in on this path uh, within the container. I then want to add some VS Code specific settings. So this is just create uh, create a uh, a debug configuration for me um, beforehand, right? Uh, and uh, and 
And what we can do is we can check to see whether um, I need to make any modifications to this debug configuration once I'm actually in the container. Um, hopefully I don't have to. Uh, and then, then then I can also say that, okay, I, when the when VS code is, when that VS code uh, session is initiated and I know I'm working in the container, uh, put me in this specific directory, right? So that's this home Azure user Docker com MNIST. Um, and then finally, uh, I can specify a set of extensions that I want here, right? So uh, let me just quickly go to the extension marketplace. I can search for, uh, I can actually search, I have these extensions here, right? So first I'm gonna take the Python extension and I'm gonna add that as an extension that I want installed in the container in that VS Code instance. And then I'm gonna take the Azure Machine Learning, not the remote extension, uh, not the remote extension, but just the main one. And I'm gonna install that in the container as well. And, and you know what, uh, I'm uh, just to make sure that I have um, all of my dependencies properly, I'm also gonna take the remote, uh, the Azure ML remote extension as well. Okay, so with this now, what I can do is I can save this and then I can run this notebook. Uh, I can run this notebook. It's gonna overwrite the existing dev container.json that I have. And now I, what, what I wanna do is I wanna reopen this folder in the dev container, right? So it's really simple given that I have the remote containers extension installed. It's really simple for me to do that. I can use, either use the, uh, the extension tree view or I can uh, open this command reopen in container. Um, and what this is going to do is that it's going to, okay, it's going to prompt me to save and then it's going to reload the window, but now it's going to initiate a VS Code remote session. Again, this is, this is all still local, but it's remote because it's now a VS Code session within that, uh, within, within a remote container, uh, or sorry, within a container. Uh, and so I'm just going to say, okay, yes, I trust this workspace. Uh, I'm going to select a Python interpreter. I'm going to use the interpreter that comes with part as part of my environment. So that's you see this Azure ML, uh, Azure ML Conda N here. Uh, and then I'm going to go to my training script. Um, I have a couple of breakpoints set already. So I'll just unset this, uh, set it on the prepare data step, uh, close some of these notifications. And uh, and yeah, and so just really quickly, what I'm doing right now is I'm in I'm in a dev I'm in a dev container, right? So I'm in I'm using a remote VS Code instance. I'm working directly within the container that again I that I started by defining in Azure ML, mat, built in ACR, materialized locally, right? So this is the Azure ML environment that I'm working directly in. And uh, and now what I can do is I can go to my debug configuration and uh, and I can. Uh, I can hit, I can press play, and what this is going to do is that this is going to uh, run this. Uh, it's going to run this script uh, within the container, and it's going to immediately hit the breakpoint, right? And so I'm realizing that you could you probably can't see the debug or uh, the debug or so. Let me just bring it in the middle. Okay, yeah, sorry, the debug toolbar, um, and so uh, yeah, so I hit the numpy breakpoint as I did before, so I can hit continue. I hit the tensor. I'm okay. So now I'm at the TensorFlow breakpoint, and this is the this is the big check, right? So this is the whole point of me using this in, environment was using Azure ML and using this environment was so that I could add TensorFlow here, and that I could then use the, this exact container without making any changes to the environment definition on my remote training eventually, right? So if I just hit continue. Um, it, I mean, I think, so the, the one quick thing there is it looks like I didn't hit that module not found error, as you, as you probably remember, uh, when it was missing in my base conda image, um, I hit that error pretty quickly. Here, uh, all of my imports work successfully, which, 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 um, at, which at a, at the, at a, well, not at a surface level, but like, which the signal that I get from this is that the environment actually looks good in terms of the Python packages that I intend to use, right? So, so that's that's awesome. Um, and now what I can just do is I can continue continue with this uh, continue with this script, uh, and uh, and it's just going to run all of the data preparation steps, and then eventually it's going to it's going to do the actual training, right? So I'm actually really satisfied with this environment that I have here. Um, Azure, like it was it was really easy, really straightforward for me to say. Okay, use this environment YAML file in Azure ML, and then do all of the kind of container materialization on my local machine, uh, and 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 then and then I could use the remote containers extension to just really easily get connected to that container, right? So I didn't have to do a lot of kind of manual uh, configuration or shell work myself in order to to get this to work, right? So you see here that the the uh, everything is being downloaded, um, and. 
Uh, and so, yeah, so it, it will take just a, it, it will take a little bit of time. Um, it will take a little bit of time for the data to get downloaded and then the epochs to run. Um, but what we can do is that we can actually uh, let this kind of happen behind the scenes. Uh, and then in the meantime, we can submit the exact same experiment, but on a remote machine and, and look to see how we can use the Azure Machine Learning extension to monitor the state of the run and kind of do things like log streaming and, 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 and things like that. So we'll just be back in a quick second. All right, so while the training continues to happen in the, in, in the container, what I can do is I can um, go back to my, the, the folder that I was working in earlier, right? So the project folder that I started in originally. And what we can, what, what we can do is we can just, we, we can start the, tr uh, the remote training with Azure Machine Learning. So just a brief, um, brief overview here. I'm satisfied with the local execution of my training script. Um, I now want to create and reference a remote compute target, and then I want to submit an experiment using the same training code as well as the same environment. So what I'm what I'm trying to guarantee here is I'm trying to guarantee that the the behavior of my training script in uh, locally is going to be the exact same as what it is on my remote machine because I'm using the exact tra same training source. I haven't made any changes to my training um, scripts, and I and I'm using the exact same Docker container. Um, so I'm I'm not uh, I haven't made any changes to the environment definition as well. So here I'm just going to run a cell to do some compute target initialization. Right, so um, you'll see here that um, I was looking for this compute target it, it, within my workspace. Uh, it looks like that cluster exists, so that's great. Um, and the minimum number of nodes requested have been provisioned. And so now what I can do is I can then run this experiment remotely. Um, this script run config uh, class I can use to, um, to, specif or to specify, or constructor, sorry, I, uh, to specify the source directory that I want to use. So that's that same project folder uh, that I've been working in. Uh, I, I'm then going to run, uh, I'm going to say I want to use this training script uh, as, as, uh, as part of that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, training script as part of that. And then I'm going to use this, uh, the comp and the compute target is the target from before. And finally, this environment is, um, this environment is the same environment that I initialized earlier, right? So I'm just going to hit uh, play. And now what this is going to do is, is that this is going to submit my experiment. Um, I'm, I, I I'm, I'm noticing one thing as I'm presenting here, which is that there's this data folder that's, uh, that's included. Um, I worry that this data folder might be too large for me to submit with, but, uh, but okay, it doesn't look like it. And I forget I mentioned anything about the data folder. Everything, everything looks okay, <laughs> but uh, cool. So my experiment's been submitted. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Azure Machine Learning extension to take a look at the uh, status of my experiment. So with the AML extension is really nice in that it provides me with my Azure machine learning context kind of directly within VS Code. So you'll see here I have a list of, I have my, this is my workspace that again, I, I use using the SDK to initialize before. Within this workspace, I have a set of resources. Um, one of the resources in, is environments, which we can take a quick peek at. Uh, when I look at this, um, you'll see that there's that DockerCon TFN, so I can view the environment here. And uh, uh, yeah, and 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 okay, yeah, and this includes the dependencies that uh, that I talked about earlier. It includes the name of the environment. It includes Docker settings as well, such as what is the base image, what is the platform, so OS and architecture details. And so this is great. Uh, all kind of information that I'm provided directly within the editor context through the extension. Um, and then what I can do is I can take a look at experiments. Uh, the DockerCon one should be the one at the very top because it's the one that I just submitted with. Uh, ignoring these run numbers right now, um, you'll see that my I can I get I get uh, information about the status of my run from directly within uh, within the tree. Um, I can look at logs. I'm not sure whether there are any logs available right now. Okay, yeah. So, so there's just a little bit of time between, for example, the compute getting provisioned and then the the execution starting to happen, which is why no logs have been materialized. But if I take a look at one of the earlier runs, I can actually. I, what I can do is I can I can stream these logs from directly within my console. So if I open up this driver log, you'll see here that uh, this driver log um, is uh, this this driver log contains information about my training accuracy and my validation accuracy, all stuff that I want to know while I'm training, right? And I can kind of monitor how that's changing over time by just streaming it directly within the console using the Azure Machine Learning extension. Um, and so yeah, so I mean my my uh, well my local. Uh, my local training is still happening, right? So that's what you see here. And you'll see that I'm on the 10th epoch. 
uh, and I get uh, training and uh, validation accuracy. Uh, I get my training and validation accuracy listed listed here. It's on the 11th epoch now. Um, and then when I go to go back here, uh, this this is still just preparing it on my remote compute target. But now what the advantage is, is that the compute target that I'm using is actually a slightly more powerful machine uh, than obviously the laptop that I have currently. Uh, and so I can um, I can guarantee that, again, my training script is going to behave in the exact same way as I expect it to. Uh, the only difference being the, the compute that it's running on, right? Because the source has, has been unchanged and the environment has been unchanged. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so uh, why don't we go to uh, take a look at a, a little bit of a recap or overview of everything that was kind of shown here today. All right. Okay. So... Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, we started off by just talking a little bit about uh, the project and, uh, and, and some concepts. Um, what, I, what, what, we, what I then did was I tried to run my training script on my local machine and I was unsuccessful in doing so, because, uh, at least initially, because I was using a base content environment that was missing uh, dependencies that I, that I needed, right? Mm -hmm. And so then I thought, okay, I know I have to run this locally. Uh, first, um, and then with enough validation, I then eventually want to run it remotely. How can I use kind of a single, um, a single environment definition or container definition for me to guarantee that my scripts are going to behave the exact same way, both locally and remotely, right? And so that's where Azure ML came in. That's where the Azure ML environments concepts came in, came in. And what I did was I defined an environment. I used a, a Conda specification file to do so. Right, so that was really nice. I didn't have to write. Uh, I didn't have to write a lot of code there. I just had to say, use this Conda spec file. Give me an environment definition. I then registered that environment as part of my workspace. Um, I built the environment in ACR. I know I skipped that build step, but uh, I would have built the environment in ACR. Uh, and then I and uh, and and then I pulled that environment from ACR onto my local machine to then materialize as a dev container using the remote containers extension. Um, again, the advantage of building an ACR is now there's a cached container image for me to use. Um, that cached container image is going to be used by uh, by the Azure Machine Learning Execution Service when uh, when I submit my remote run as well, right? So I save uh, I save in terms of uh, I, I, their, their performance savings there in terms of not having to rebuild uh, the, the container image on my remote compute target. Um, and, uh, and, and, then, and then, and so yeah, so, so then once I had it materialized locally in the dev container, I then was able to run my training script, validate that all of my imports look good. So that was great. Um, and, then, and then just continue doing the local execution, um, continue doing the local execution within that container. And you saw the epochs that were running. Um, and then finally, what I said was, okay, I know my epochs are running as expected. I haven't run into any issues. My imports look good. I'm going to then take that and I'm going to run it remotely and use Azure ML to do so, right? And so that's where we brought in the compute target um, and we ran it uh, We ran it on the remote machine. Um, and so, yeah, so I mean, uh, from, a, from a getting started standpoint, uh, I'd, uh, I'd love it if uh, you all uh, took a look at the Azure Machine Learning Service. There's a lot to learn there. There are a lot of different ways, so many more ways in which you can use the service that I that I didn't get a chance to talk about, right? Because I only have I only have 30 minutes to do so. Uh, then then I would take a look at the Remote Containers extension. A very useful ex extension for you to be able to work in these kind of remote VS Code instances directly against containers that you're using. Um, and then finally, um, the Azure Machine Learning extension, if you do end up uh, continuing to stay uh, with Azure Machine Learning in the VS Code context, this is a really useful extension for you to, uh, to, to not only do kind of the tree view management that I showed you here of your assets and resources, but also uh, new ways, uh, or, but also enhanced ways in which you can author kind of YAML configuration files um, and connect directly to remote compute without any networking configuration, additional networking configuration or things like that. Um, so yeah, so uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, super happy to be talking at DockerCon this year. Uh, yeah, and I hope to see you all soon. Take care.